All right, so we're going to be playing Master of Orion 2 Battle at Antares today. Uh, I'm a little sick, so sorry if I sound stuffed up at times or a little hard to understand, but I, I wanted to get this video together. This is a good game, and uh, I want everybody to get a chance to kind of see it, take a look at it. It's an older game. It's uh, from like 1996, but it's still one of the best, I think, at least one of the best strategy games of all time. So uh, anyway, here we go. Oh, and by the way, you can get this game on like GOG, which is good old games, or uh, there may be some other places. I'm not sure if Steam has it or not, uh, but uh, it, it, it's like I said, it's an older game. Now, these are the settings I normally play on. Impossible, huge, average, eight players, pre-warp, and all of the options on our own. Now, you, you can change it up, and I, I highly suggest you do change it up, especially if you're new. I mean, it goes all the way down to tutor level, tutor easy, average, hard, and impossible. And here's the thing. I usually play on impossible, but I don't always win. Not, not by any chance do I always win. So, but I'm going to go ahead and play it on uh, impossible today. We'll leave the galaxy age set at average because that's uh, the fairest for most races. I'm going to leave eight players. Uh, I'm going to leave the galaxy at huge because with eight players, it, it's just ridiculous to have anything, uh, smaller in, in my mind than the huge because you'll like literally be starting on top of each other so uh, as far as pre-warp i use pre-warp because of the different settings for tech level basically pre-warp starts you out at the beginning with zero technology so you have to research everything from the ground up all right now here you can pick your race uh, these are all pre-configured races they all have set benefits and disadvantages uh, or you can go into custom, and if this is your first time playing, I suggest you go into custom and just pick one, and then clear it, and then take the time to go down through these abilities and kind of look at what they do. I mean, some of the stuff is, is obvious, like negative 20 ship defense, well that means you get negative 20 to your defense of your ship. No biggie, but some of the things are not quite as, uh, maybe as, basically as, as transparent. Like, say, for example, cybernetic. I mean, okay, yeah, you assume that you're part machine, but but what does that actually do? Well, what it does is it lets you help, it helps you to repair your ship, armor and structure, and uh, other things. Basically, 5% internal, uh, also 5% of an internal systems of a ship will be repaired each turn. Um, all of your damage is repaired after combat. But the disadvantage is, well, I don't know if this is a disadvantage necessarily or not. It could be considered an advantage. Um, they eat both production and food, but they only eat half the amount of food as normal, but they eat half of their stuff as a production as well. So it's kind of a trade-off. Instead of eating just food, uh, you you eat food and production, which I don't, I personally don't like that, but uh, some people might find that as an advantage. The only one of this to me that's an advantage is Lithovore, and, and obviously it is because it's 10 points. But the good thing about Lithovore is you don't eat food at all. So you don't have to worry about farmers. You can take all the people that would normally be farming and you can put them over on to doing other things like research and stuff. Anyway, so I'm going to escape out of this and uh, pick a predetermined race. My favorite race is the Silicoids especially on impossible because on impossible repulsive repulsive means none of the play, none of the other races will interact with you in a favorable way. So the best you can hope for is they hold off on attacking you. But the, uh, that's the disadvantage. You also get the worst, uh, you get offered the worst leaders and stuff like that. But the on impossible, it's not quite as bad of a disadvantage because on impossible, Everybody, the moment they see weakness, everybody pounces on you anyway. So it's kind of, uh, it's kind of annoying, but like I said, so that kind of balances it out. The, uh, other disadvantage they have is that they, they reproduce slowly at 50% the rate, but that again, that's to me, that's not that big of a deal. So it takes you longer to get your population. Uh, there's technology that can help with that and some other things. My next favorite race are the Cylons and the reason I like them is because they are, uh, excuse me, they are the, uh, they're what we call the, the 
the researchers here, the scientists, the geniuses. They get bonuses to their scientific research, which is nice, but they're also creative. And what creative does is when you, you'll see it in a minute on a technology tree, most of the time you can only pick one option of the four. We'll say there'll be like four options, three or four, and you have to pick one of those to research. Well, the Cylons, they have the advantage of getting all of those options. So they don't have to pick and choose which version they take. They take it all. So that, that's, that's a huge advantage. Um, and, and really, that's an advantage that you can only kind of overcome by trading with other races and stuff. So you're kind of, that, that's, that's, a, that's an advantage that's, that's there permanently. There's no easy piece of tech that, that overcomes that ability. So uh, that's kind of like right here. Uh, the, the Sacra, I, I guess they're, they're my third favorite race. The advantage they have is they have a, well, I don't care about the population growth or the food production as much, although the food production is needed. But they're sub subterranean. And by being subterranean, what happens is, is they grow, or they can put like double the amount of people on a planet. And that's, again, that's something that you just can't, you can't just overcome that. Uh, there's no technology. There's technologies that allow you to put more people on a planet, but they will always have a base double race of the, of whatever. So, and then there are a few others, uh, that are interesting. Uh, these people have, uh, plus 50% ship offense. Uh, these are plus 50% ship defense. Uh, these guys are ground combat and stuff. I'm not that big of a deal on ground combat because I don't really like ground combat. These guys are the bonus. These are the stealthy guys that love to spy. And, uh, while I don't like playing them, I hate playing against them because they will steal all of your technology. But anyway, uh, let's see here. Since I'm playing, let's go with, uh, tell you what, let's go with, let's go with the Cylons. They, they have, they're, a, they have a good advantage. Plus while they're not my favorite, they, they'll let you see more of the, the game, I think. Now, when it comes time to pick a color, there's a little bit more to it than just picking a color. Uh, but you won't know this until after you get into the game. Race does not determine what your ships look like. So this isn't Star Trek or something like that where you have uh, Romulans have a certain type of ship style. You know, the Federation has a certain type of ship style, et cetera, et cetera. So humans don't have a certain type of ship style. What determines the style of your ships are the color that you pick. Um, I personally like the purple ships and the green ships best. So since I play through, I'm going to pick purple. All right. Now this is my home uh, star system. I'm going to hit accept. All right. So this is the, the, the universe, so to speak, the galaxy. And uh, we're actually, I like this starting position. I like being down here in the bottom corner. Any of the corners would have been good. And the reason I like corners is because it's I can branch out a little bit and I don't have to worry about bumping into people quite as much. Uh, the worst is to me is to start out somewhere around the center. And the reason why is because one of these stars in the center is usually always Orion. And it's a planet that you won't be able to colonize for a while when you first start. So it, it can be, it's, a, it's kind of a disadvantage. Now of these, I think the best spot to have started would have been right here. And the reason why is because it has two planets that are fairly close. I don't think these two planets, I think the yellow one is fine, but I don't think this white one's going to be as close. It may not be. We'll see. Anyway, so now you could click on your star. There's different ways you can get to your, your colonies and your star system. You can click on the star system like that, and that opens up this menu, and you can look and you can see your different uh, planets. This is the planet we're on, and this is the planet that we can colonize. Now, uh, the thing is, is important to note, we're a low G race, low gravity. So because of that, we suffer penalties on regular gravity worlds and high gravity worlds. So we'll get a penalty to our workforce right here, even on this other planet. Uh, now, this planet requires food or produces food. If we put people here, this is barren. And because it's barren, we won't be able to grow any food there. And... Uh, so we'll have to have extra food being produced on this planet. 
or or another planet as we colonize and go forward. Now, uh, a couple other quick things real quick. This is your brow. And as you can see, we get a negative 20 brow and the 20 percent. And that's because the type of government we are, we're a dictatorship. And uh, people don't like being in a dictatorship, so they suffer negative morale. However, because it's a dictatorship, you can you get a bonus 20% morale if you have a any type of military base there. So basically, like any dictatorship, you you you've got troops there keeping people in line. So that that's how they represent this. And morale morale affects everything. Like if we had a negative morale, it would drop all of our things by whatever percentage. So let's see here. And then, all right, industry produced. Okay. So we're going to go in here and we're going to start building a colony base. And basically all we're really doing is banking our production. Okay. Let me explain this. This is a quick, um, uh, don't, I mean, this is your queue where you build stuff, but what I, the way I want you to think about it is think of it more like you're saving money to, and then you're going to buy all, even though you're building something, all your production points and it costs 200 to build it. All your building points are being stacked up until you reach $200 and then you get the, the device or whatever it is building. But if at some point in time, say you're building this and it's $200 and at some point in time you've got a spy that you need right now and you're halfway done with this colony base if you swap that spy in that colony base the spy gets built because it's not like you're building directly towards the colony base you're just building that's why I say think of it more as money so anyway so I'm going to drop this guy down here get us some more research because what we want to do is, uh, this is your taxes, by the way. You can set tax rates. So this is your command points. Command points are used for your fleets. Um, different things like a star base, star fortress, or a battle station, and different types of communication. Each one of those things produces a certain amount of command points. And then each certain ship, t uh, depending on what size that ship is, you requires a certain amount of command points. So... This is your food, uh, any net food or you food, as long as it's zero is good. Cause that means you're making just, you're making exactly the amount that your people need. If this goes negative somewhere, somebody is not getting fed. And what that'll do is, is that'll reduce your population growth. Any excess food. If you, for every two food over, you'll get one credit. So it's not usually an efficient way to make money, but I mean, it, it is there if you need it. So let's see here. Ah, this is your freighter fleets. You uh, create your freighter fleets and what they do is you have to build them. And what they do is, is each, it takes one freighter and you build them in units of five. It takes one freighter to transport one food to say from one planet that's producing it to a planet that's not producing it. So, um, uh, and then it also, you also use, even the people that don't use food need, can need at least a few freighters because freighters, it takes five freighters to move your populations around. So this is your research. So we go in here and we'll pick our research. Now, there's, there's a lot of different things you could do, a lot of different researches. And you see how, like, see how this got those three arrows? That's, uh, that's kind of the way it is. There are certain things that, that it does that for all of the races. And that's going to be the first two things of power, both freighters and colony ships. Everybody gets those. That's, that's the freebie. Everybody, when they research that bracket or that uh, branch of the tree, of the tech tree, they get all three options. Okay. Also, everybody gets all three of these options and everybody gets all four of these options. Now, past that, you would have to pick one. Like if you were over here on force fields, or if you were on the second level of chemistry, you'd have to pick one. But because we are Cylons, it doesn't matter. We always get all three options. So that's, that's like I said, that's an interesting advantage. But now the build that I do pretty much with every race, I can't really think of a race that I don't do this first. Is I go in here to computers and I'm looking for this research laboratory. 
And the important part about the research laboratory is it generates five research points and it increases the research generated by a scientist on that planet by one. The main thing is, is it generates five research. It generates that research, whether you have anybody actually doing researching or not, that five research it does is immune to gravity. It's immune to any kind of, there are no, there are no negatives that, that really affect it. So as far as your stuff that would affect your people, don't, don't really affect it. So uh, then my, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way up to that. Now, you know, here's a few other things. I personally keep the music turned off and, and I'll show you why. I personally find that music annoying. I mean, maybe you don't, maybe you like it. And uh, you know what? I tell you what, I'll leave it on low, which I think even on low, it's going to, uh, with the way I've got everything configured, I, I doubt you'll hear it most of the time with me talking. But, uh, you know, I'll leave it there and kind of let you, kind of let you see how it does. You know, some people actually like it. I don't, personally. Uh, let's see, settings. Now, you can do different things, like you can have end to turn weight, but, and I'll show you what end to turn weight does. So we're going to back out. And so we're going to take our turn. Right, turn. Oh, it went one. It clicked one. And that's what happens. When you have end to turn weight set up, all it does is you have to click this every time you want a, a turn or something to happen. Even if, even if basically things are out of your control, because like right now we've got all of our colonies building something and we're researching, I'd have to click manually each and every time. So, or what you can do, is you can go up here and you can uh, do the uh, click off the end to turn weight and just leave it with end to turn summary. And then you'll only get a summary when something actually happens. So you don't have to uh, manually click every time. See, like it, it jumped forward three and there it is. So we got our computer. Now we're going to go this route. All right, so we've got 15 turns. Let's go in here and check in on this. All right, Colony Bays. Okay, so we'd have had to click that 15 times. And, you know, save yourself some uh, repetitive stress injury and just, just turn that on. All right. So then we go up here. I like to go up here next and go to construction because construction has... Uh, automated factories and automated factories are kind of the equivalent. It's, it's the basic building unit that you need because it gives you five production and it allows your people to generate more production on their own. But uh, trust me, it, it does five production, which in and of itself, five production is, is pretty good. So, all right, now we're going to go back to the colony. And this is where I was talking about, remember how I said it's like you're purchasing it? And like you're saving up money. Well, this item right here, the research lab costs 60. Well, and so because it costs 60, it would take 21 turns to build it here. Well, we've already been building on this thing right here. So if we move that up there like that, research lab will be done in two turns. So basically, just like I said, think of it like money. Think of it, you're saving up your money and you're going to spend it all at once on something. Okay, that gives us our next step is a colony base. Okay, not bad. Now we're getting our automated factories. Uh, this is a ship captain. I don't want him. Oh, let's see. Let me go over these real quick. This is your colonies, an overview of your colonies. You can see things. You can, you can uh, basically check on it when we have more than one colony is when it really starts to, to be better right now we're just as well off to go in and click like this but uh once you once you get a lot of colonies you want to be able to go in here then you can go click straight to build area or click straight to right there or you can move people around like you can even move them from this colony to another colony all kinds of things anyway um uh, then we've got planets and what this is 
This doesn't show you all of your planets. This shows you all of the planets that are in range that you have not already produced a colony on. Once you have a colony on here, you don't have to, it, it won't do anything anymore. It, it won't show up here. So, and you can see it, it gives you kind of a breakdown. Like, all right, this one is, it's going to be a normal gravity world, but we're going to get a negative 25% to production. However, because it's rich, we're going to get five production per worker, which is more than we normally have. And you can sort these. You can do like no normal gravity, etc., non-hostile, things like that. This is your fleet. We don't have a fleet yet, but when we, if we had one, we'd be able to go in and check each fleet by star system and see what we're going to do with it. So I'm gonna, anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and pass this turn. There we go. We've got our automated factories. Now, the next thing is freighters, because if we get that colony base built before we have freighters, then people will product, basically people will be starving. So, all right, go in here, automated factory. Oh, drop one guy over here. All right, finish that. All right, we've got our freighters. Now I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to jump over here to biology because I want soil enrichment, which gives me an extra food per person that does farming. And that frees, I find that frees up so many people that it's, it's worth it. Plus we get biospheres, which give us a, a two extra population and we get a hydroponic farm, which gives us two food if we want to on a world, even that, even on a world that doesn't have uh, the capability of growing food. All right. Do that. All right. Now we're going for the soil enrichment. Let's see how long we've got left on this. Okay. We've got a colony base coming up. I'm going to let this colony base finish. And then I'm going to show you what happens when you don't have freighters. Okay. Colony base is finished. Build it there. Okay. So now, now we can see. First off, you see the morale penalty, and we don't have a military base, so we're going to be stuck with it. All right. It's a regular gravity world, and here's where it comes in. All right. Normally, we produce five production. We lose one and a, a quarter production because of the gravity penalty, and then we lose one because of the morale penalty. So, in the end, we're losing two. All right. We're going to build an automated factory research lab and a marine barracks and then we'll just see kind of see what we've got there all right so now we go down here to our other colony all right uh they're going to build a freighter fleet and then uh, that'll be good enough for right now well no it won't be we're going to build a freighter fleet and some biospheres because the population is getting kind of heavy there Okay, now, negative one food. First off, we, we're not producing any extra food. Second off, we don't have a freighter even if we were. So what that does is, is that causes, see how right here on this, this planet, we're down here at the bottom, we're doing plus 77,000. That's our population. That means it's growing. Well, if you go to this one, we're at negative 14,000. The good thing is, is it won't go automatically to zero. So you, you don't ever run completely out. So you can just leave one person there. But, uh, all right. So now we've got an automated factory working. Now it's going to take 20 turns. Now we can speed that up by paying uh, 240. Right now, I'm not going to do that because I don't, it's not imperative so I'm going to wait. But now also because we're starving, it's going to show this message every turn. All right. This is our first uh, leader that for a colony that's been offered to us. He's not very good in, in most respects. I mean, he, he helps diplomacy. And then... Uh, He's famous, though, which 
has two effects. One, when we hire new people, uh, they cost whatever his famous level is. That's how much less they cost. So in his case, he'll reduce the cost of all new officers by 60. He also increases our chances of getting the, uh, the better leaders. But now I do like this guy better than another one that's similar. And the reason why is this guy has mega wealth. And the cool thing about mega wealth, normally you have to pay your administrators every turn, which hurts the bottom line, but this guy actually contributes money. So we're going to hire him. Okay. All right, we can now do, do our uh, soil enrichment. And while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and move over here and build and go to chemistry. And the reason we go here is this will allow us to start building scout ships to explore the galaxy. And then we'll, our next step after that will be this one so we can build colony ships to colonize the galaxy. All right. Finish the biospheres. Got to go with soil enrichment. And as you can see, we're producing a food and one of our freighters is being used to haul that food. Ah, that's another thing. Let me go real quick. Each planet can produce a certain amount of industry. And once you get past that industry level, excuse me, once you get past that industry, you start producing pollution. So like right now, each person is producing six. And then they get an extra bonus one. Or excuse me, each person is producing three and they get a bonus one from the automated factory. So right now we've got 13 production with two guys. We drop another guy. Now normally we would expect that to go to 17. However, we've got two pollution because we exceeded the, the level. So that two pollution penalty drops us to 15. So in reality, you can get to the point where people, it's just not as effective to add more people working on stuff. You're better off to have them doing other tasks if you need them to. So. All right. That gives us our scout. And this will give us a colony ship. All right. Now, the next step, that depends. Different play styles would do different things here. Uh, one thing you can do is you can press forward two levels and get a planetary supercomputer. Another thing you can do is come up here and press forward uh, two levels to get the spaceport and then a third level to get robo miners, which will increase your production. That's a good one. Uh, another one you can do is go down here and learn two levels of chemistry, which will give you a merculite or excuse me, a pollution processor. And really, I, I usually try to push down this level. And the reason why is because not only do we get, at least I do this if I'm playing a non-tolerant race, like if I'm not playing the silicoids. And the reason why is because not only do you get the pollution processor and stuff, but you get upgraded missiles, which can be useful for fighting if you run into the, something that you need to fight. So we're going to go here. Now, I'm going to go in here. Actually, I'm going to wait. Okay, finished it. So now we're producing more food than we need. So let's take a look at this. We're producing seven food more than we need. And so what we can do is, is we can take some of these guys and put them to other stuff, like, say, research. Okay. Now, we're going to design. A, that's another thing. You can design your ships so and kind of customize them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and this is a pretty standard play for your scout ship. Chances are your scout ship is so small. It doesn't have really any tech capabilities. And what will happen is, is it has a good chance of dying. If it runs into anything hostile, it's, it's going to die. So I just save the money and remove the weapons. And I even go in and remove the computer. So that makes it a little tiny bit cheaper. And, uh, oh, now you do have different options. You can make them look differently. To me, all of the purple ships look like bugs. 
Let's see here. Kind of like, kind of like that one. There we go. Reminds me of my old uh, Insecticons. So, let's see here. And we'll build one of those. Okay, our scout was built. Now we're going to go in here and we're going to build a colony ship. All right, so where can we go? Can we go there? Yes, we can go there. So we're going to explore. White stars are not usually a good place for us to build. Uh, they usually don't have the planets that you would like. Usually your best planets for a race, for a normal race, is going to be around yellow stars. So, but again, it, it, it can be a toss up. You can get lucky and find really good planets. It's just not usual. Ah, so we are offered, he's going to join us for zero and one a turn. Now, he's actually not that bad because he's a ship person. So he doesn't take up one of our colony leadership positions. He just takes up one of our ship captain positions. And so that actually isn't so bad because, I mean, more research to me is always better. Ah, see? White dwarf, no planets. All right. Hopefully there'll be some good planets there. All right, we got the new fuel cells that lets us uh, go further. Oh, that's another thing. You can only go so far uh, without having a base around to refuel. And that's what these uh, that's what these different fuel cells do. Like the iridium fuel cells allow you to go nine parsecs before you have to refuel. So anyway. All right radiated abundant this star system it actually has a lot of potential for like the late game because you've got a, a regular planet not great not bad uh however you've got three gas giants and all you can normally do is put an outpost on them and wait but later on there's technology that will turn gas giants into planets so this, like I said, this system isn't horrible. But uh, anyway, now normally that would have been as far as we could go. But since we researched the improved fuel cells, well, when we research improved fuel cells, hopefully we'll be able to go a little further. Okay. You know what? Let's put one guy there. Okay. Finish the barracks, and you see this this planet's getting hit with pollution hard. So what we'll do is, is we're gonna go ahead and build some biospheres, and let's put a hydroponic farm. And the reason why is to take some of the well, first off, it's a small planet, but it also takes some of the uh, load off of our main planet, so it doesn't have to we don't have to have everybody farming and shipping food out. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and go one more level to get the iridium fuel cells. Normally I wouldn't go that far. You know what? But, well, tell you what. Let me look at my ships. All right, so I'm going to work on a, a ship that does damage. So we're going to go right here. We're going to make this ship a little bit bigger. We're going to make it a destroyer, cruiser, destroyer, frigate. Let's go with a cruiser. No, let's go with a destroyer. Now, uh, put a little defense on there. Now, here's the thing. Nuclear missiles normally take up a lot more space but because the way technology works is is if you if you research a technology tree in this in this case chemistry the first web missiles were nuclear missiles the ones we just discovered were merculite so what happens is is as you go up the technology tree nuclear missiles 
which started out at the same, they started out at eight damage, but they originally started out with 20 space and 20 cost. Well, or at least 20 space. Now they've, they've gotten, they take up less space. So as technology in a field progresses, a lot of stuff in that field will take up less space. They also often get uh, advantages, which in this case, Merv. Merv is a huge advantage. And, and what Merv does is it allows it to have four warheads. So basically what we're getting off of this is four times eight. So we're getting 32 versus the four, 14 of that one. And then I like to click on fast. The reason why I click on fast, first off, it doesn't increase the space much. And the next thing is, is missiles really need to get to wherever as fast as possible because a lot of times people will have beam weapons or some of the monsters will have beam weapons and basically they'll be shooting you while you're waiting on your missiles to get there and blow them up. All right, so we're going to max out our missiles. We don't need a, a computer on this ship because computers are for beam weapons to hit. All right. And we're going to build, we'll build three of those. But first, we're going to put this pollution processor down here. And what that pollution processor does is basically you, you can produce twice the, uh, here we go. You can produce only half of your production counts for the planet to use to be determined to produce pollution. So it, it really increases the amount that you can do. So like right now, go. Okay, pollution processor was done. And as you can see now, we're not losing any of our industry to pollution. So, it's useful. Now, if we were not creative, this guy would be a lot more useful. Uh, ordnance isn't bad. But the important part is, is he comes with the knowledge of uh, advanced damage control. And advanced damage control completely repairs your ship at the end of the turn. I mean, after combat. So anyway, what you end up with, but see, you can get it down here, but it's several steps away. So it, it can give you an advantage early on, especially. Okay. All right, finished our colony ship. Let this one start. You know what? I want another colony ship. So we're going to let that start building. So we're going to come over here and colonize this planet. I don't really care for this leader. All right, automated factory, marine barracks, research lab. Then we'll do a pollution processor and a biosphere. Eh, and a hydroponic farm. And a star base. Okay, so we should be able to go all over the place now. Yep, we've got three new planets we can visit. And we've bumped into a race. Wow. Okay, so the disadvantage of bumping into a race is the advantage is you can trade with them or form treaties. The disadvantage is, is now you got to deal with them stealing your technology or trying to attack you. Uh, I'm going to try for a treaty. Okay. All right. So now we've got treaties with them. And that's going to cost us money at first, but it'll it'll go from being negative to positive, and that, that's a good thing. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go up here to this one, and we're going to go ahead and build four spies, five spies. Let's do five spies. And the reason why is because they're going to start trying to steal our technology pretty soon. I mean, it, it's just the way it is. They, they are quick to jump on that. Okay, we got a little bit of a fleet going. That was a poor call our planet. Uh, 
That's no planet. Okay, so not the best selection of planets around. Reject him. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Let's see here. Let's go ahead and let's build a uh huh. At this point I think I want to build a hydroponic farm. It's expensive, but at least it frees up a couple of guys. Which is always a good thing. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. Now, here's something important to see. Uh, we have exceeded our technology. Or, excuse me. We have exceeded... Let's build some more freighters. Because we're going to need those. We have exceeded our command points, not our technology. Excuse me about that. And because we've exceeded our command points, for every negative, multiply that by 10. And that's how many dollars per turn you lose. So we, we want to get rid of that as soon as possible. And what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to fly my little scout ship back. And as soon as my scout ship gets back, I'm going to scrap it. And that way it'll quit taking up command points. Okay, so we got that. Let's go with, uh, let's go with more research. What we're headed for, by the way, is we're headed for a supercomputer. But the, it isn't bad along the way. We get the neural scanner, which improves our uh, spies. So it helps protect our, uh, both protect our spies and if we wanted to spy on the enemy, it would improve that. So I'm going to go ahead and build the automated factory. I'm going to jumpstart the build because I don't want to wait 12 more turns. Let's see, atmospheric renewer and a star base. Atmospheric Renewer. Okay. Okay, so now we're here. We're going to go to our fleet. And we're going to scrap this guy. And because we did that, our uh, money per turn went up. All right. Now we can do our supercomputer. Yeah, you thank us, but in reality, you would be blowing us up if it weren't for the fact that I've got a fleet. Let's see here. Atmosphere Renewer. Um, I'm going to move some of my guys over here, but increase my research. All right, so we got that. A lot of things I could build. I'm going to well, basically what it's a technique where you basically stockpile your money. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to Corvette and I'm going to bump this up to actually being a battleship and I'm going to name it uh, Piggy Bank. And then I'm going to clear it out and I'm going to put the most expensive stuff I can find on it. So all of this ship's designed to do is hold is to basically be a piggy bank and, and let me stockpile money for when there's something I want to build. Okay, so we're going to start building piggy bank and we're not really, we're never, our goal is never to finish piggy bank. It's just to basically stockpile industry points there. Okay, we got our planetary supercomputer. And a hollow simulator. The cool thing about hollow simulator is it improves morale. And as you saw earlier, morale penalties are universal and so are morale bonuses. Now we're gonna we're gonna jump around a little bit. We're gonna grab this real quick, just so that we have a ranged weapon. And then in the meantime, we're gonna go in here 
We're going to get all of our supercomputers and all of our holo simulators. Supercomputer, holo simulator. All right. See if we can't speed this up some. All right, they gave us the basic level of that. We can go up here and we're gonna go ahead and, uh, you know, I want my, let's see, what is this? It uh, gives me bonuses to my, it gives us two experience each turn. Let's go ahead and get battle pods right now. Okay, got our battle pods. Now we're going down this route. What we want is the spaceport and then the uh, robo miners because the robo miners are 10 production plus two extra per, uh, production per person that we have working. But uh, spaceport increases our money from a colony and money is an issue in this game. So because every building you build has an upkeep cost. All of your fleet, if it exceeds, has an upkeep cost. So there's, there's tons of costs. And right now, like for example, right now we've got that guy with Mega Wealth who gives us the plus 10. If we didn't have him, we would be losing money every turn. Let's see, okay. All right. Uh, food production means basically something increased somewhere. Now we've got to have another guy doing farming. Kind of annoying, but it is what it is. All right, we've got our spaceport. Now we can work on our robo miners. I don't really. I should. I should probably hire him just to have bonuses to the. Just to have some kind of a bonus, but I don't like him. Hey, what? Let's look at him. He's zero to hire. We'll go ahead and get him. He can at least increase our research a little. Let's see here. We're right now we're doing 122. So let's assign him to Midtar. And now we're doing 148. So he's he's worth it. Until we can find something better. All right. Spaceport. Now, right now, you can look and see this colony is actually losing money. And the way you can tell is the gold is, is highlighted. And then when you come over here, that's basically, that's what it's producing. It's producing six. But what it costs to upkeep it is it went three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, fifteen. Uh, so building the spaceport will help alleviate some of that. As a matter of fact, Mintar is producing four extra. It's actually our, our highest income planet, but this will definitely help. Okay, we've got our robo miners. You know what? I think at this point I'm going to do uh I'm gonna do shielding. Need some shields. Alright. Do a robo miner plant. They just throw in a battle station. Robo miner plant, battle station. All right.
Okay, now we have a decision. Where do we want to go next? We could take this route and get a auto lab, which increases our research more. And I really think that's kind of the route I want to go. The other option would be to go for terraforming. But uh, since we're now training technology is less of a benefit for the for creative races. Because, like I said, you get everything at every tier. However, if you could go in and you find somebody, a, a tier like genetic mutations where there's only terraforming. If you could find somebody who's willing to trade you terraforming, that saves you that whole section. So a lot of times it's worth it. But I think in the meantime, let's see here. Let's go with the, uh, let's go with the cybersecurity link. Human spy stole from us. Let's see here. Okay. Just probably build a few more spies. Once I get to the point where I can. Toss a couple of guys extra there. Now we'll do our auto lab. want to take that i don't really want the planet but it, it would be good to have a third star system so we may take that all right he built a battle station go ahead and build me a colony ship i tell you what build me an outpost ship and a colony ship the good thing about the outpost ship is you can just let it be kind of like a refueling place to extend how far you can explore out into the galaxy or if you build onto that planet where you put the outpost ship, if you land the colony ship there next, what you end up with is automatically having a marine barracks. So it can be useful. Okay, so we'll go from there. Okay. Battle station. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw all of these guys on research and then I'm going to take this and I'm going to set it on trade goods. And what trade goods does is it just increases the colony. So like, okay, I'll give you an example. Let's say we're building a marine barracks. Right now this colony is taking in eight income. Okay. And we've got, what do we got? We've got 15 production. So if I change this to trade goods, Suddenly, we've got uh, eight being produced by trade by trade goods. So basically, it's about a fifty percent, I believe, is the route it goes. Two for one, so it's it's not bad, and that'll help us stockpile some money. Oh, what else am I gonna do? Let's see here. You know what? I'll fly this one over there. I'm going to fly these guys back because I'm going to change my ships. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to redesign the escort because we've had some technology improvements. And that's another thing. A lot of times is it will forget your ship, your custom ship. It'll forget the first time you build one. So uh, it's just a quirk, I think, of the game because probably some incompatibility somewhere. So anyway, we're going to go here. Clear all this off. Yeah. 
And now we're going to change these things up. First off, we've got battle pods. And what battle pods do is they increase your space by 50%. All right, so then we need some kind of defense. It's always good to have a little bit of defense on your ship. If it's nothing more than just a reinforced hull. Let's see here. Let's go with... Uh, let's go with... You know, let's, let's go with tripling the armor. All right. And then we could do... Uh, Reduces our hit penalties by a third. That's not bad, but let's see here. So now we could go in here and we could do we could do missiles if we wanted to again. Or we could do a mass driver, which does six damage, and it's got one upgrade that's decent. So that would bump it up to nine damage. But the problem is is until we research a little bit more and get auto fire, it's not really worth it. So I'm gonna leave it on missiles. Uh and I'm going to do, because now nuclear missiles are taking up a lot less space. Right. So build that. So let our guys get here. All right. Now. Great build the battle station. All right. I'm gonna refit this ship. That's something you could do. You could always refit your ships. Uh, you, unfortunately, you just can't make a smaller ship into a bigger ship. But as your technology increases, you can improve your ships. All right. I mean, this guy's really good, but he's also really expensive. And he's not something that I, I have to have. Although galactic lore is nice because the good thing about galactic lore is it lets you know everything about every planet. So, you know what? Let's hire this guy. All right, so now we've instantly, we instantly can see everything. So now we see everything of everybody. We can click on every planet and see. Uh, and we can see that we're pretty much behind everybody. All right. I'm going to vote for the human just because he's near me and uh, I don't, it, it helps improve our relations. All right. So we got the auto lab. I'm going to, uh, huh. Tell you what, I'm going to build a space academy. That way our fleet can start improving. And he had already built there, so that kind of kind of screws us over a little bit. So we're gonna fly back. Okay. We go a different route now. We're going to uh, we're gonna hop up here because I want planet construction. Since I'm stuck with the star systems I've got. I will at least turn some extra uh, gas giants and stuff into planets. Yeah. All right. All right. And I'm going to start building some defenses just because 
People are going to probably start getting aggressive soon. And I like to have my defenses at least a little ways prepared in advance. No, uh, we're not going to build an outpost. Oh good, another race. Let's see if we can... Uh, you got a good tech? Oh, he's got terraforming. I'll agree. I want terraforming. Okay. Lose the trade treaty if I don't give him 10%. I don't have spies. Somebody framed me, so. I mean, I have spies, but I don't have spies in his area. But I don't really want the hostility right now, so. Let's see here. Uh, Auto lab. Care for me. Okay. Okay. All right, planet construction. Once we get planet construction, we're going to jump over here. So, okay, ground batteries, and we're going to go ahead and pre-build. A colony, couple of colony ships and outpost ships. And the reason why is that'll give us, well, as we start that way, we don't have to. Normally, what'll happen is is you'll have to build a planet, and then build a base on it. But this will kind of let us pre-build our bases there, so that'll help. Let's look at our fleet. All right, so these guys are all level ones, but they're earning experience every turn, so that's good. All right, between these two, I'm going to vote for Tyrant. All right, so we got that. Let's go here and do the alias psychology, Zeno psychology. And the real reason I'm doing Zeno psychology, first off, it improves your trade deals. But the main thing is, is the next step is a planetary stock exchange, which helps. Uh, another thing we could do to kind of cut back on how much money we're losing is we could do a tax problem with doing attacks is that's how much less production each one of your colonies overall is doing so i mean i'll do a 20 percent for now but it, it it can add up quick and it can slow your overall growth okay recyclotron Artificial planet. Okay. Cyclotron. Outpost ship. Outpost ship. All right. Planetary stock exchange. Right. 
You know what? Let's improve our engine. Let, oh, let's get this right here. Okay. Right. Got stock exchange. Now this, what this does right here is basically I'm getting it for the scanner and for the uh, communications. The good thing about the communications is it gives, it lets us build a bigger fleet. Of course, the other option would be to go that route, but let's, uh, see here yeah let's let's go communications uh let's design a battleship We're going to put people to actually, this is going to be something we're actually going to build. So, let's give ourselves 70% missile evasion, uh, a reinforced hull, and double any damage that penetrates a shield. Whoops, wrong thing. And then we're going to go up here, we're going to pick mass drivers, heavy mount. And we're actually going to build this one. And it, then we're going to research our shields up and improve it. So. Right. All right, let's see here, let's increase our shield capabilities. We're not gonna build an outpost yet. We're gonna wait till that planet finishes. After that planet finishes, we're gonna do a stock exchange. Now, let's see here. There's a couple of different routes we could go. I think I want to go down the physics route. No, I tell you what, deep core mine, mining and core waste dumps are really good. So let's let's go that route. see we converted one of these into a planet and so now we can build an outpost and then build there we go 
So now we've got another colony. We can move some people around. Because a planet, see, it produces zero population because it's at max. But, like, if we take and move some of these guys over here, that'll put this place back to producing. So it kind of maximizes all of our resources. I'm going to abstain on this one. I don't really care for either one of them, to be honest. All right. Uh, automated factory. Marine barracks. I'll tell you what, no, automated factory, robo miner plant, marine barracks. Which, oh, we don't have to build the marine barracks because we already have it because of the uh, outpost ship. Uh, silly me. All right, pollution processor. Atmospheric renewer and a recyclotron. There we go. I will go ahead and buy this to speed the process up. I'm also moving people here. Because that'll speed things up as well. All right. You know what? Build another one of these. See what we're looking at. No, we're at we're at pretty much the max right now of what we can have without it costing us. Let's redesign this thing. Okay, now we have armor piercing and auto fire, which makes these guns a lot better. Okay, so we're going to refit, all right, and then we're going to fly these three ships back over here, and we're going to re-upgrade them as well. All right. The artificial planet. Design a courier. Change this over from missiles to mass drivers. All right. Uh. Double damage, it penetrates the shield. Okay point we're going to put all of our guys on research and trade goods see if we can get out of this 10% see if we demand something what will happen There we go. Yeah, I'm I'm glad we got rid of that tribute treaty. Okay. Let's 
Let's see here. Robotic factory. Think about a robotic factory. The more resources your planet has, the, the better it is. So on a, basically, as you can see, it's 5, 8, 10, 15, or 20. And on an average planet, a mineral normal planet, it's 10. So, and it has a three upkeep. So it's it's not really, it, it's not worth it on some of the cheaper planets. But uh, here, I think it's going to be worth it because if nothing else, we can always use it for uh, later on for uh, producing money, trade goods. So, let's see, robotic factory. Robotic factory. Okay. Okay, I just had somewhere start up oh, population boom. So that means I need to, as soon as this artificial planet gets built, I need to get people off of this planet because they're going to start producing a ton of population. Uh, farming leader and labor leader. He's actually not my favorite by far. What does Operation C? Command rating of ships. But he's not horrible. And he's better than anything I've got right now. So I'm going to put him in this one. Okay. Uh, 19 to build an artificial planet. Yeah, let's get this artificial planet built. How long is it for this one does its artificial planet? Oh, one turn. No, let's not do that then. Let's do a uh, research lab, supercomputer, auto lab, and then we'll, uh, we'll do, let's, We'll go from there. I tell you what, let's do this first. The robotic factory, and then we'll go from there. We'll abstain, because I'm actually beside both of these guys. I don't want to piss off either of them, if I can help it. All right, deep core mining and core waste dumps. Awesome. Now. Now it's time to do some research. First, we're going to do some better engines, because our ships are too slow. Uh, core waste dump, deep core mine, artificial planet. Build outpost. Colonize the planet. All right. So what we're going to do now is... Terraforming. Automated factory. Robo miner plant. Deep core mine. Core waste dump. Roller simulator. See, now, because of the core waste dump, it takes care of all pollution. So we don't ever have to build any of the other things like the pollution processor and stuff. Okay. Okay.
All right. Now we need to try to make a decision. Where do we want to go? Do we want more research? Or do we want to flesh out our military a little bit? And I really think, I think we need to go right here and at least get the planetary gravity generator. No, let's go down to the subspace. Although, now let's go here because I want that warp interdictor. What a warp interdictor does is it slows people down coming to your planet so that it gives you more time to uh, move your fleets around if you need to to get people in place and stuff. It slows them down by two turns. So, let's see here. Okay, we've got that. All right. Uh, need more food. Okay. They're on trade goods. So we'll move all those guys there. Oof. Okay. Oh, this guy is a really good leader. I mean, he gives you bonuses to everything. So I'm going to hire him. And then go over here. I'm going to put him right here on this one. And then I'm going to get rid of this guy. I don't really like him that much. And I actually want the extra technology right now. Believe it or not, the extra research. Okay. Trade goods. Okay, did they finish their, nope. Okay. Let me see here. Terraforming. Auto lab. Robotic factory. The artificial planet. Yeah, that should be good. All right, he finished an auto lab. So we're going to do radiation shoot. Uh, we're going to do hmm, hollow simulator. Then we're going to do a spaceport, stock exchange, radiation shield, missile base, ground batteries. Let's get some defenses in place. Oh, wait. I take that back. This planet is maxed on, cap on uh, population. So let's do that first. Okay. All right. Ah, this guy's good. I like him as well. And he has the advantage of by being an instructor, what he does is he gives all of our ships, no matter where they're stationed, experience. So, like, our fleet will will get better uh, and they'll gain levels and experience so plus by him being a science leader 
I can put him in Mintar and get rid of Emo. That frees me up one more spot. Okay, you can see, all right, this one's rich. Because this one's rich, I'm going to put a space academy here because rich colonies tend to build stuff faster, so it's good to have. And I'm going to build some extra spies. Now let's, uh, let's get a report on the races that we know. See what these people have. Eh. Oh, they got a capital. Uh, never mind. They're at war. They're not at war. Wow. They've got a lot of spies. Okay, finish the missile base. See how long we've got on that artificial planet. Four turns. Okay. Core waste dumps almost finished. Let's see. Hydroponic farm, ground battery, fighter garrison, terraforming, boom, boom. That should be it. Okay, we got our warp interdictor. And since we're close to it, we can go ahead and get our next level of shield. And that'll give us Gauss cannons, which are pretty good. All right. Let's see here. Now, you only need one interdictor per per star system. Because otherwise, unless you plan on your, your colony being wiped out, so you won't lose it unless that colony is wiped out. So what I like to do is I like to put it on the first planet in a colony. And what that does is that lets me kind of quickly go, okay, you know, only my first one has it. So I don't double up because what you got to realize, this thing here has an upkeep cost of three, a maintenance of three, which is expensive. So... Okay. All right, we finished our artificial planet. So now we're going to build a colony base here. It's only two turns. But luckily, we've still got our outpost ship here, so we can go ahead and that gives us a jump on the morale, basically. I abstain because voting for either of them hurts me. I wish somebody else were. Oh my gosh. No wonder. Oh, well, actually, those guys should be at a point where they're. I'm surprised they aren't in the contested. All right. Probe a minor plant. All right, and then we'll take one guy off of this, put him there. And this one, we we'll build some terraforming and a warp interdictor. Now let's reverse those. Okay, so we need. Let's see what we know about these. Planetary gravity generator, something I'm actually interested in, but it's not that far off. Let's get a report on these guys. Let's see what their fleet looks like. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
Uh, Sakura have visited Orion. I don't know if that means if they captured Orion, but if they did, they're going to be deadly. Okay. We need more fleet. Okay, let's swap. Eh, let's leave that as it is. There we go. Nope, he hasn't taken Orion yet. Class 5 shield, good. Uh, I could keep going up the shield level, which is not bad. Or, I could, let's see here. Go to physics. Huh. Cloaking device. Completely hides a ship. Long range scans. Missiles. 50% chance to miss. Does not attack. Phasing cloak. That is a good one. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to pick up the armor real quick. It's an easy upgrade. Tell you what, because our place is so small, instead what we're going to actually do is we're going to go over here and we're going to pick up the Astro Universe. Well, let's see. Let's see if somebody has Astro University. That's what we're going to do first. We're going to see if anybody's got an Astro University. So. Does anybody have an Astro University? No. What about you? Do you have an Astro University? I doubt it. You got Zotrion armor, though. Huh. All right, we have the uh, we have these guys coming in the Antarans. They're they're tiny looking, but they're deceiving because their guys are a lot tougher than they look. Uh, we'll move a couple of guys down here. Get some more money coming in, and I'm gonna make man, my fleet's already there, so we'll be ready. Fortunately, they always attack a colony. They don't just sit there and blockade you. All right. Oof. All right. Yep. Annoying. All right, let's get rid of the bombers and the missiles right now. Let's see if we can focus on killing the ship. All right, there we go. 
Ugh. Two ships down. Three ships down. I guess the advantage is I'll get to uh, build my fleet up with bigger ships. The problem is, is I don't have much of a navy right now, so people are more likely to attack me. Let's see, terraforming, soil enrichment. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to put yeah you definitely need to be building that fighter and I guess that's going to be it for right now Uh, 10% tribute treaty. Yes, I'll accept it. Oh, this is annoying. They are so bad at spying. And so everybody can, like, screw with them and they blame it on somebody else. All right. You know what? We're going to build another ship here too. Can we do Gauss Cannons and Heavy Mount? Yeah, that'll be a good start. Okay, better armor. Uh, even better armor and better missiles. Astro University. You know what? I need, how far down are disruptors? Oh, they're a good ways down. All right, so let's uh, let's go here. Let's get some uh, yeah. Let's go down this route. Okay. Go with. Advanced city planning because that gives us five extra people per colony or per planet. So let's see. Yep, there's that. Yep. Wait, what? All right, we got a new ship. I'll put this one on housing because that will, uh, Increase our population growth. Same thing for this one. I want to max out my uh, people.
Somebody take Orion. Nope, not yet. How far can we fly now? Not very. Okay. These two up. All right, the Alarians are gone. We've got advanced city planning that increases our population, star fortress. You know, I'd love I would love to do that to start building doom stars. But at the same time, I just I need mega fluxers. But that's really all I want out of this one. Let's see here. Hey what? You know what? Let's go down here because I want that gravity generator. A little extra take some of these guys off of farming there we go star fortress star fortress the cool thing about a star fortress is it increases our command points which lets us have a bigger fleet which since we only have a few planets that's actually a great thing. Okay. Uh, hydroponic farm. Okay. All right. Gravity generator. All right. Jump gate has the advantage of letting our guys transit faster between our colonies. But you know what? I think at this point... Oh man, it's a hard call. Let's go with a uh, let's go with the jump gate. Cuz that gets us closer to disruptors. All right, gravity generator. That helps everything. Cuz I'll show you real quick. Gravity even affects your research. And your farming. So gravity affects everything. Also, if you ever get a crappy leader that you don't like, uh, be sure to go in and get rid of them as quickly as possible. Because as long as they're sitting there, you won't be offered another person and they hang around for 30 turns. Let me see. Callisto is no good. Mithras is no good. Mulban 
is no good. About tempted to go try to take Orion. Okay, so... One has the jump gate. Dimensional portal lets us go there. Stargate. That lets you automatically jump between your colonies. That's actually not a bad route to go. So I think we're going to max out. Let's see what our fleet looks like. Four battleships. That's not horrible. Yeah, I'll do a non-aggression pack, but, but, we are going to break our tribute treaty. You're no longer paying me tri tribute. You, you, I was paying you. Is that 12 parsecs? Not enough. What can you offer me? Nothing. All right. Yeah, I don't want to vote for either of these. All right. So we can do housing and max out our population which is actually a good thing. Okay, we've got phasers. Nobody's taken Orion yet. Everybody's working on housing. You know what? These guys working on housing, I'm gonna change and put them on research. I want I want to get some research done. Okay. Matter Garrison, Soil Enrichment, Terraforming, Battle Station, Star Fortress. There we go. Now, let's see here. These guys, yeah, finish the Star Fortress. Uh, then Design a new fighter. Class 5 shields are not that great. Decent armor. Gauss cannons. All right. Plasma. I don't really like the plasma cannons. Now this will give us disruptor cannons, which are a really good weapon. I think they're like 40 damage base something like that we're gonna build two more fighters and kind of see where we're at okay there we go thank you for the research treaty Okay, finished our fighter. Now what we're going to do, housing, and max our guys out. See, battleships take four. We've got ten. Okay. Dimensional portal, disruptors. All right, so we've got disruptors. Um, Mauler device isn't bad. It does a lot of damage and it, it, it always hits, but it, it suffers a lot of range penalty, which is annoying. So what I'm going to do now, is you know what? I'm going to go ahead 
and let's see here. Yeah, let's do this. Let's keep going. Somebody's going to eventually take Orion if we don't hurry up. All right, so we're going to redesign our fighter. We want our Gauss cannons to be disruptors. We want them to be heavy mount, which is 60 damage. But we're not going to build that yet. We're going to let it keep going as is. Uh, science leader, spiritual leader, assassin, and telepath. I don't really... He's not bad. He actually isn't bad. But uh, not... Not the guy I want right now. Not the guy I'm hoping to get. Okay, let's see here. Housing, 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 star fortress, terraforming again, build a outpost ship and a college ship. Okay. Housing. And go to research. What's going on in the Bubbleosa system? Eh. All right, communications. All right, Stargate and a Time Warp Facilitator. Both very good. Time Warp Facilitator. Well, here it is. It gives you an extra shot. So we're going to research this. And then... Hopefully, hopefully this will work. What we're trying to do is we're trying to beat them to Orion. And it's going to take two things to get us there. Two levels of technology have to be maxed. All right, the colony ship is finished. We can go to housing. Okay. Wait, does he increase science too? Yes, he's science as well. Okay. All right, so we're producing way more food than we need. Oh. Uh, No place is producing a huge amount more than it needs, so I don't really want to take people off and have to start using freighters again, so we'll... Alright, let's design a fighter again. We got... Nope, we're still where we're at. Alright. Finished our housing. Tell you what we're going to do. Put some of our guys here. Some of our more of our guys there. We're gonna go back to housing. Finished our housing. Change it over to let's make another fighter. There we go. Uh don't really like her either. And build another fighter. Let's just put you on a repeat build of spies. All right, so let's see if we can actually have any kind of peaceful relationship with these guys. You got any tech we need? No. Trade treaty? Research treaty? All right, good. So at least that's some... Form of 
All right. Now we need the armor and the fuel cells. So what we're going to do is build a stellar converter everywhere we can. That's a big gun that does a lot of damage. All right, what else can we do here? Move these guys there. All right, let's look at our fleet. Two, four, six, eight ships. Not very... Okay. Somebody got Orion. So there that goes. All right. We were so close, too. They're going to offer me scissors, and I get something. Uh, huh. Well, a Tyronic computer is good. You know what? Take the Doomstar construction. Because that will let me start building Doomstars, which is really what I want. So let me design a Doom Star. We're going to put a uh, battle pod on it. And let's go with stellar converters. Always like having stellar converters on it. Okay, there we go. That's a pre preliminary design. All right, so we now have met another race, finally. Uh, all right. Change tech. Mega fluxers. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, they don't have much of anything that I want. These guys they got a cloaking device, but I don't really want the cloaking device. Let's see if we can get a treaty. Okay, so we've got that. All right, so let's... We're about to cap out on the best armor. Galactic Cybernet. Actually, we want that on everybody. That's the final research facility upgrade. All right. I'm building the dimensional portal because there's a couple of different ways you can win. You can win by diplomacy, which is the, the least likely to happen. Uh, you can win by uh, killing everybody, which is a, a very valid way of winning. Or the th third way you can win is by attacking a Antares. And uh, oh, so we're at war now. 
Oh, great. Yep. I hate this. They're so touchy. And then these guys, once you meet these guys, they, they are so spy. They tra they frame you for everything. Anyway. Uh, so what we can do is, oh, by the way, let's see who got that real quick. Orion is blue and blue is, oh, blue is the Sakura. So they're just not willing to, tr or they're just not willing to trade their good stuff because they've got death rays and stuff now. And they're not willing to trade that. Yeah, they're not willing to do it. Okay. Let's see. Well, let's see what happens if we demand technology, death ray, particle beam, class 10 shield. Wow. It's a spatial compressor. Uh, cancel. Goodbye. Okay. So, what we're going to do is we're going to be prepared for the end run, which is basically the, the the loop around these guys. We're going to start doing this, and then we'll probably attack a few places, and then once I blow up a planet or two, just to kind of show you, I'll then take the dimensional portal and, and win by going to Antares, assuming I can still win. So, we'll see. Easier said than done. I, I may not win. All right. Let's see here. Time warp facilitator because we want two shots. And that's all for right now. And we're going to start building a dreadnought. be honest I'm really surprised everybody's ignoring me that normally doesn't happen normally I've got people on me from like turn two as soon as I run into somebody they're on me trying to kill me so I'm, I'm kind of fortunate with that Oh, great. So now I'm at war with the humans. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. Time to redesign some ships. Design our fighters have a time warp facilitator and then the disruptors need auto fire and more of them I'm not worried about missile evasion so much as let's see it's not bad let's see is there anything else Structural analyzer I already have. Yeah, that's about it. Okay, that'll be it. Okay, my guys to refitting. Okay, and build a flux shield. In fact, all my planets need a flux shield now. Move everybody and get all this crap built. It's time to get everything built. Just for defensive measures, or uh, defensive measures.
All right, time to do housing. Okay, so here we go. More housing. It's basically finish out populating all of my colonies to the maximum. Put everybody on research. Do what I can. Build up a fleet. Conquer the world. Or the universe, I guess. Galaxy. Okay, finish with housing. You can do some spies. Oh, great. So I've got orange and yellow attacking me. Lovely. Let's see if I can enter into a alliance. Not pleasing. So I'm at war with the humans and with those guys. God, this is annoying. Right, they're five turns out. So. All right. Okay, start working on class 10 shields. You know what? Screw it. I don't normally build space academies on all my planets, but I'm going to be producing a lot of... Sh I need to produce a lot of ships quickly. So, uh, yeah. Three destroyers, some titans, some battleships. Ugh, stealth. Freaking cloaking. If I can just live through this. They're in trouble. I believe. All right. So, I lived through it, but let's see what kind of shields they're running. Class 5 shields, that's not that bad. All right, so let's start this way. Let's start blowing up the ones closest to me. No, let's start with that guy. Oof, not nearly what I was hoping I would do in damage. Let me kill anything I can kill. Not good at all. Oh my god, I'm missing. What are they using for defense? ECM jammers. Oh, they've got all these... Uh... All right. Lots of missing. That took care of things. All right. Ah.
Oh, those little fighters are annoying. Yep. This is taking a toll on my fleet. Thing is, is I, th I think I'm going to win this one, no problem. But, well, I say no problem with heavy losses. But I don't know what's going to happen when I get hit by the uh, next ones. Oh uh, yeah, limited fire arc. Okay, I won. Wasn't an easy win. All right. So we're going to start building a Dreadnought here. Actually, we're going to start building a Dreadnought at every one of these places. Because I need a fleet. So they get here one dreadnought well one doom star all right so that and that That was anticlimactic. Flux shield. Ah, when it rains, it pours. Okay, what are you sending? Quite a bit. And I've got three ships and a Doomstar? No, that's not even a Doomstar. Lovely. You know what? I hate to do it, but some of these dreadnoughts are going to have to become fighters. Let's see. Battle Pods, Range Master, Structural Analyzer, Time Warp Facilitator. Yeah, heavy disruptors on auto fire. Let's see. Okay. 
da, da, da. Yep. Okay, I had to have a fighter. Because I've got to have some ships. possible time to be attacked by the Antarans. And it's never a good time to be attacked by the Antarans, but normally you don't have to deal with everybody. Everybody in the universe is after you all at the same time. Of course. Okay. That'll give me a few more ships before they get here. Tell you what, in the space battles, being the fastest is very important. taste the old stellar converter and see what it does all right present a different shield that's something you can do by the way you can turn and present a different shield arc to incoming damage and that kind of gets a little more advantage out of your shields all right All right. 
it. Done. All right, let's see if we can see if we can get an audience with these guys and tell them we want peace. Okay. What if I give you some technology? I'll offer you armored barracks. Okay. Goodbye. see here how far are we away from that we're a good long ways let's put some people on it I need some research I need it fast all right there we go Housing finished. You know what? We'll put two guys there. One guy there. And put you back on housing till you get finished. Really, is that the humans? What are they sending? Probably some ginormous fleet. Yes. Uh, way more than I want to deal with. You know what? I'm going to vote for Tyran. There we go. Ugh. Not good. Yep. If I survive all of this, I may have to take the cheaty way out and just go ahead and attack Antares because I've got two races that do not want to let up fighting me. fighters just decimate my fleet. God. Let's see what just the Stellar Converter can do. Okay, 
Well, what does my fleet look like now? Nothing? Lovely. Lovely. All right, so I've got my breakthrough on my 10 phase or er, level 10 shields. <sighs> Let's go with uh, advanced because that'll give us, oh my God, more guys, four turns, four turns from the humans, four turns from the Mirshan. All right, I'm not so worried about the Mirshan. They're not sending very much. All right, so we're going to put all of our guys to building ships. Whoops, no. All right, all of our guys to building ships. Now, we're going to design a new ship. It's time to design a new ship. Well, first off, I guess we need that barrier field. Because that's a good shield. All right. Barrier shield. Okay, so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to design a new ship. A fighter, because that's what i got time for. All right, clear it all out. Let's get a new design for it. Let's give it something. Let's go with that one right there. All right, so we're going to give it battle pods. And not a cloaking device. We're going to give it, we're going to give it a time warp facilitator. Uh, actually, you know what? I think we are going to give it a cloaking device. Cloaking device. Invisible on main screen. No. Let's see here. Augmented, cloaking, displacement. Phasing cloak. All right, here we go. Phasing cloak. That's what we're going to go. And then we're going to go with disruptors. Or we could do this. Always hits. Now let's go with disruptors. Heavy mount, auto fire. All right. And that's what we're going to build. He turns it take to build that here. Six. Send them off just to get rid of them for right now because they're in my way. Keep confusing myself. All right. So we're going to do that. Ooh, he's good. Yeah, I'll hire you, dude. All right. You know what? Somebody's going to build a dreadnought. Thank you. 
There we go. I wonder if that's any good. Give it a shot, though. There we go. Sometimes it's not what you want to build, but you need a fleet. So, and I think I can fight them away from where I'm at now. Let's see what happens if I wait. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. Okay. That's horrible. Oh, they had a pilot. That was why. Okay, let's see what happens. Build a dreadnought. Returns, so we can get these guys over here real quick. And the, the advantage of fighting them before they get to the planet is the way I've got my ship set up now, what they do is, is they start out in stealth. So they can't attack me. And then I've got that time warp facilitator, which lets me take an extra turn. So what I can do is, is I can wait all the way down. And then after I do that, I can kill their guy and they never get to my planet. So, and the reason why that's important is if they're launching, I don't want them to damage my planet or my space station. So, oh wait, what are they, what are they using for shields now? Class 10 shields. Why is this one missing? Yeah? Huh. Wait a second. Time Warp Facilitator and Phasing Cloak. Are, are they all the same? Yep.
There we go. I need to come up with a better design. Let's see here. I'm a fighter. See, I've got battle pods, phasing cloak, and a time warp facilitator. I think I need... Let's see here. Uh, doubles any damage that penetrates a shield. That one's a good one. How many do I have to lose for that? Just one? That's worth it. Okay. Cool. Right. rid of that doom star oh, actually what is that doom star carrying uh battle pods da, 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 quantum detonator spatial compressors death rays ooh death rays yeah This is like the kind of cheatiest, cheesy way to, to fight. But when you start out with only two colonies or compare or two star systems, you've got two compared to everybody else's. Sometimes you have to use a little, little bit of an adv advantageous maneuver to uh, take care of people. Okay. Let's see here. Artemis Net. Yeah, I'll do that. And how about you and I have a non aggression pax? All right. Yeah, nothing. Nothing that I want. Okay. that does is it's basically you're putting mines in space and it does a little bit of damage to them okay need research right now in a bad way got enough fleet I think to uh, hold people off for now for a little while at least 
let me get in some research. Okay. Now see the Achilles targeting unit um, triples your chance and any uh, striking an enemy weapon. Let's see. Triples the chance of striking an enemy's weapon and shield systems and completely bypasses the ship's armor. Which isn't bad. And then the, the, the best computer in the game. But do I already have that? No, I've only got the Cybertronic computer. Which this ship doesn't even need a computer. All right. Everybody's working on a dreadnought. Actually, you know what? No, you're not. You're going to be working on a spy. All right. That's the best computer. Let's see here. can actually build this. It isn't bad. Pleasure dome, subterranean farms, and a weather controller. That's actually useful stuff. Way more food than I need. Let's see, let's do Astro University. I use that too. Not really, but I can use what's past it. Imperium. That'll give me some more command points, which will reduce the cost I'm spending on these things. More ships. Lovely. Humans. Okay, that increased my command points. And then the Galactic Currency Exchange just gives me 50% more income from all colonies. So, I mean, it's not bad. All right. You know, I need to rebuild my ships. All right, first off, I need to get... I've got way too much food. Jeez Louise. You know what? Everybody's going to be doing ships in that system. Oh my gosh, so much food. There we go. All right. So I'm going to be redesigning my ship because it gets the better computer this time around. And let's see. Three times the chance to hit. Is that worth two guns? No. Let's see. Doubles any damage that... It, how much does that space does that take up? Let's see here. Doubles the damage that penetrates the shield. Let's see. Structural Analyzer. Takes up 20. So I'm going to leave that one.
Yeah, so we're going to build it like that. Basically, we're doing it for the... Uh... Hold on, let's see how long we've got. Okay, we've got four turns. And we've got a lot of ships. Let's see how many is in our fleet. Two, three, four, 12, 13. Okay, so we got four. So let's do this. We've got four colonies. They can each do three. So they're going to refit three ships each. Yep, they're going to refit three ships each. And after they do that, they're going to build an Astro University. One of them's going to have to refit four ships. I think it's going to be this one. Yep. All right. Yeah, I'm not. I'm going to vote for Tyran because. He didn't attack me. Oh, good. Hyperspace Flux. As long as that's in effect, people can't attack me anymore. Oh, lovely. Hyperspace Flux. That means I've got this freaking human fleet coming in because they're on target. Ah, uh, great. A lot of human fleet. Just all of a sudden pops up out of nowhere. As soon as the flux hits. Okay. Actually, what are these guys? Let's see what these guys are running. Do they have Mahler devices? No, no Mahler devices. Awesome. Okay. All right.
and you can see now why I said it's better to uh, if you have the cloaking to fight them away from your main planet and everything because they can still by being this close they can attack they can't attack my ships but they can attack my star base and my planet which sucks and what this does is this gives me a chance to get past the fact that everybody has a higher initiative than I do or at least the Mirshan do for sure Okay. Music to my ears, hearing one of their guys blow up. Now, while I manage to avoid calamity there, I'm still not out of the woods yet because if you'll look, I've got several of their ships coming in on my home system. And because of the flux, I can't move back to my home system to do anything about it. I don't know. I, my scanner should have picked it up before, but it was so weird. Like some of them started moving after the flux, but see, like I can't go there. So hopefully I can build a ship or two just to kind of hold them off hopefully Maybe I'll have time to have another one. Nope, that one's not going to happen. All right. Yeah, this one doesn't need to be building a fighter. This one needs to be building a dreadnought. Okay. The only really saving grace is that they're kind of coming in piecemeal. So, piecemeal. So, hopefully that'll, that'll help. All right. Thank you. 
kill the humans. Mirshawn. Ugh. Okay. Oh, these guys are annoying. All right. What you got left? Let's hit you with just the stellar converter right now. Let's see what happens. Uh feels so good to blow people up. There we go. Now the cool thing about this, the evolutionary trans, uh, evolutionary mutation, it allows you four extra points to go back to the customized race screen. And usually at this point, probably the best thing that you can pick up is the uh, Warlord, which allows your ships to get an extra level of experience. Um... No. I don't want fish man. I don't even have enough planets to make him worth it. Or enough star systems. Okay. Dreadnought. And Dreadnought. Okay, what do I get up here? Faster ships. Uh, faster ships. Let's go with that. Okay, so I've got four points. Now, I could take 50% uh, to ship attack, which isn't bad. Uh, that's not bad at all. I could get 25% ship defense, which also isn't bad. Or I can go down here and get Warlord. Uh, let's see. Potential eventual ultra elites. Uh, and each colony produces extra command points. So I like that. All right. Let's see here. Okay. You know what? I'm going to hire this dude. Ordinance is decent. Oh, he made a dreadnought. I was not expecting that. Let's do a Gaia transformation. All right. Before anybody else gets one in. Let's go ahead and put everybody on the Gaia transformations.
Food replicators basically let you turn two units of production into one unit of food, but it's not really worth it because by this time, as you can see, I'm only, I've only got like one or two dudes on each one. So like my, my guys are producing ridiculous amounts of food. So, and what's their production here? 67, 99. I mean, thing is, is I could put, take these two and let's see what's the, what's the difference? Six versus 20. I mean, it might be worth it. know what let's just see I'm over here telling you it's not worth it but uh, I've never really really bothered with the food replicators to see so they may be better than I'm thinking but what's their upkeep 10 oof yeah that's the reason I don't do food replicators okay more population, even more food. Oh, good. Okay, so what I'm going to move to now is physics, and the reason I'm moving to physics is because it'll shrink down my uh, my weapons, especially my big guns. Oh my god, yeah, that's a lot of that's a lot of fleet. I'm going to vote for Tyron again. All right. All right. So let's uh let's see about that design of that dreadnought one more time. Amazing cloak. Uh. Doubles any damage that penetrates the shield. There we go. Oh, wait. These weapons don't actually need a computer at all. There we go. They never miss. That's the thing. They don't, they don't, the, uh, that gun doesn't need a computer because it never misses. All right. I think I'm going to wait and see what happens. They'll probably blow up my star base. I just hope they don't have a stellar converter.
Yep. There it goes, probably. Oh, they do have a stellar converter. Oof. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good at all. Yep, that was a little poor planning on my part. Uh, my ship, my planet just got uh, hurt. It may not even be there. <laughs> So what you saw earlier was a misplay on my part that probably cost me an entire planet that I'll have to rebuild back up from the ground up. One thing you can do is if you blow up a ship, if you, if you can, if ships don't always blow up, but if you can, if one of them blows up, it'll take out the shields for the most part of the ships around it. So that can really help. So it really like, it helps to blow up the ships on the front line to kind of open up space for the ships behind it. That'll cause one ship exploding gets you gets rid of their shields, which lets you just kind of hammer in deeper and deeper into their fleet. Okay. All right.
All right. Now I get to rebuild that colony up completely. Oh, so wasteful. I think. No, it didn't completely destroy it. Wow, okay. Core waste dump, deep core mine, cybernet, batteries, base, oh, skips pollution. Okay. Right. Do you want a dreadnought? Okay, let me redesign this dreadnought. You see, I got a lot more space now. That's because the uh, stellar converters don't take up as much space as they were. So, how much does the time warp facilitator take up? That's another thing that gets smaller, is the time warp facilitator. So, now the phasing cloak. Let's see. It's another kind of big one, but I don't have time for it right now. I don't need computer. All right. So what does this one have? This one has battle pod, structural analyzer, phasing cloak, time warp facilitator, Yeah, that should be should be good enough. So we're gonna refit our tread knots. Hopefully soon, we'll be able to upgrade the number of stellar converters on them. Okay. We picked up more space on this guy, which gives us two more of those. I think about five levels past or four levels past is the last time anything shrinks. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that one. Okay. You do need to be a little careful on your refitting of your ships because you can sometimes queue too many of them up and then you won't have enough fleet for defense. But I think I'm going to be okay right now. So, Plus it'll save me some money. Because I think I was at negative 26 command points. There we go. And basically that warp interdictor will give me more time. Yep, see, three turns. It's got a big fleet coming. Decently sized fleet.
All right. Okay, I've got a chance to fight them before they get to my colonies, so I'm going to. And I'm going to wait all these guys out. All right. That was good. You know, you'd think at some point they would go, man, we keep sending fleets down there and losing them. And he's not actually attacking us. Maybe we should uh, quit sending our fleets down there. Find somebody else to pick on for right now. Again, uh, hopefully not towards me at least. Okay. Move that fleet over there. Move those guys there. Time to start hammering. All right. And, and I can't really stress enough how important it is to get the first shot in. Because once you get to this stage of the game, weapons are just so damaging that it, it's just ridiculous the advantage of going first. Because, I mean, if, if you go first, you can 
sometimes knock out all of their fleet or if not even all of it, or at least half of it. And so it, it's the concept of, of everything you blow up is something that can't be shooting back. So. All right. What does he have coming in now? Eh. Uh, it is? I didn't ask you to declare war on the... Oh. oh, okay. Yep, somebody required you to attack me, and so you did. So, you were allied with one of those two. Let's see what happens here. Okay. That's fine. Ah, uh, the Maclars. Do I really want to fight them? Or do I just want to attack Antares and be done with it? You know what? Let's go ahead and attack Antares. We've got a big fleet. And I think pretty much everybody has seen what the uh, what the fights are like. Here's a little interesting thing. If you turn off the music, then it turns off the uh, sound effects for these cutscenes as well. All right, so we're going to wait, 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 wait. All right, so let's see what we can do here. Now, these guys... If you'll notice, they have a quantum detonator, which lets them blow up a damper field and a wide area jammer. Okay, that's not that bad. But this guy, reflection field. That reflection field can be pretty tough. So... Yep, see? Wasn't that bad that time but depending now oh and it won't reflect a uh it won't reflect a uh what was that gun it won't reflect a stellar converter Ugh. Not much damage at all.
right. Let's see what this thing has. Has all of that stuff. It's pretty dangerous. But not to a stellar converter. Of course, stellar converter didn't do a huge amount of damage either. Four stellar converters, and we still haven't scraped their armor off completely. See that? Completely knocked my front shield off and did some damage to my armor. I suggest if you have have the time and you don't mind a, a really long and drawn out game, it, it can be very rewarding going ahead and going in and blowing everybody up or taking over their colonies or whatever. But I have found that for me, I like to, uh, after I fight them a little bit in space, to just go ahead and move on to the uh, attacking Antares because it, it, it just drags out a little bit too long for me because there's there's logistics involved. So you set up your colonies. Now you can fly your fleets out and just like blow up their planets and not try to colonize it. But then you kind of lose all those resources. Now their planet itself, it doesn't have any defenses or anything. See, so you don't have to worry about that. And what you can do if you like want to, you know, just blow it up just to, Take out a little frustration. Well, actually, you can't because you don't. I was going to say you could take a uh, stellar converter, but all all it'll do is just do damage. It won't see. Anyway, that's uh pretty much it. Like I said, you you can go for different types of victories. You can set it up to be harder or easier or whatever. But I recommend uh, working your way up to impossible and then trying it out. Thanks for watching. I think next time I'm gonna be trying something a little more modern. I kind of want to play Cyberpunk while it's still new and uh, hopefully by now fixed for most of its bugs. See you next time.